absolutely love having uh, you allow me to come into your homes, into your, your communities, and just shine a little bit of light. And actually, that's what I want to talk about today, is uh, really just about the duality of light versus darkness, and just really just celebrating the power, the potential within each of us that leads to our purpose but again, we go right back to this concept of light versus darkness. And let's just go ahead and jump into the Sunday morning message because uh, I, I've just really enjoyed the last couple of days working on this material for you all for today. And I want to start off with a very old, just a beautiful old scripture from uh, the Judeo-Christian Bible, right? The Lamza translation of the Bible, which is one of my favorites. Dr. George Lamza uh, was born in the Middle East and was born into a Peshitta Aramaic speaking community. So Dr. George Lamza, who's now in spirit, translated the old, the old scrolls, if you will, the original texts of what, what became eventually the Bible. So think of like the Dead Sea Scrolls, right? From Qumran, that region where all the Essenes were, the sect where Jesus came from. And so those very strange old scrolls, he translated those with his understanding of all the, 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 way, the ways that they spoke in the time and the meanings of everything. And so his translation is actually, in our opinion, the most accurate translation of the ancient scriptures. But listen to this, because this is the scripture that really uh, just sums it all up for today for us. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 22 to 23, it says this, the eye is the lamp of the body, and if therefore your eye be clear, your whole body is full of light. But if your eye is diseased, your whole body will be dark. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how much more will be your darkness? Isn't that powerful, you guys? You know, we may be familiar with some of the other translations of the Bible, so I'm, I'm, I'd be curious to know if that even sounds different to you. But that's, what a, what a beautiful, I want to say revelational. I mean, it really is just so powerful the way, the way it says it, because it talks about if your eye is clear, your eyes are clear, what do we call the eyes? The windows to the soul, right? And so if your eyes are clear, then your whole body is full of light, Right? And then also, if our eyes are diseased, your whole body, oh, let me make this distinction. When I, when I shared this scripture with you, and I just reminded myself, <laughs> I said eyes plural. Let's listen to the scripture. The eye, singular, is the lamp of the body. How many eyes do I have? I have two. <laughs> if therefore your eye singular, be clear, your whole body is also lighted. But if your eye, singular, is diseased, your whole body will be dark. Therefore, if the light that is in you is darkness, how much more will be your darkness? What it's saying is, there's, there's, there's also another scripture in the Bible in another place where it talks about when, when two eyes become one, right? What do we have right here? What is inside? our mind, there is an energy center, a potential, a spiritual potential that we call the third eye chakra, right? And so when my two eyes close to the external stimulation and I go inward to my inner world, right? I have, I focus, I basically open my singular eye. And that's how biblical scripture, a lot of, 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 of the chapters and the writings and the letters in the Bible, that's how they're written. They're written in a superficial way for the average common man, humanity, but they're also written on a spiritual level, a deeper level, a higher vibrational level. We call that higher truth teaching or metaphysical teachings, right? So what it's saying is that for those that actually, those who have ears who can hear, right? It's saying that be aware how you're focusing your vision. Is your vision going outward to the world, stimulating you, distracting you? Or do you repeatedly, daily, constantly go within to seek the light of God within, the truth, the knowledge, the wisdom, the inspiration, the revelation, and so forth? 
So what a beautiful scripture that really just brings forward this concept of the duality of light and darkness within the human condition. Now, I want to just talk with you about something because the, the concept of today's topic came actually through really divine revelation, if you want to call it that. But today we call it trans channeling, right? Channeling mediumship. In particular, a friend of mine came to the church many years ago and brought me this article about a being that many of you may or may not know named Cryon, right? World famous. And this being Cryon channels through the prophet or the medium, right? Named Lee Carroll, okay? And so this being Cryon is actually a, a focal point of consciousness for a collection of souls in the spirit world or a collection of soul consciousness. But Cryon focuses all of that light and channels that through Lee Carroll. Now, what's interesting about all of this is that uh, is basically that Lee Carroll, if you know or you, maybe you don't know this, and probably it may surprise you because I didn't even know it when I was handed the material. I had heard of this Lee Carroll guy. He actually does a beautiful job. Check him out. But did you know the United Nations has allowed Cryon, this being, to speak through Lee Carroll at the United Nations probably more than 12 times now over the last 20 years. And so Cryon speaks and shares teachings and truth to world leaders in the United Nations building. And that is, to me, that's pretty groundbreaking. That's pretty revolutionary. And it just goes to show the progress that's being made from a spiritual level of bringing more light into the world that, that world government officials are willing to listen to what they consider truth. And so they are allowing, they're in a way the gatekeepers that allow more darkness or more light into the world. How beautiful. And so what's interesting is that in that material that I had read, this beautiful article that talked about the light versus the darkness and, and all the potentials within us and, and so forth, that material wasn't really new to me. The person, the being was new to me. But it, that information was already in the library of my mind. I had already been taught that in seminary. I understood that. Spirit had taught me these concepts. So this, all of today, really, I, I want you to understand this. The information was there as potential, right? And then what I do with it is another thing. So let's, I want you to think of it this way. So this week, when I was trying to think of some symbology around today's topic, one of the things that Spirit gave me was that of a phoenix. And a phoenix is this beautiful, fiery bird. And it, as it grows and matures, at some point, it reaches a, a point of pressure, a point of pivoting or change. And it suddenly bursts into flames and is, is reduced to ashes. And it's gone. Or is it? And then very soon, suddenly the egg is born, the egg hatches, and a new phoenix rises from the ashes of the original phoenix. So, you know, did the, did, the, did the egg, did the phoenix magically appear in that pile of ashes? No, it was already there. There was a potential inside for that phoenix to come forward. And so just like that phoenix, we have the same potentials inside of us. And so the potential is always there to be reborn in the light, in our potentials for our purpose on our path through this life on earth, this great third dimension of, of experience. This is really amazing. So I've heard this material so many times before and, you know, within my own being, it was already stewing or really burning, right? It was really, it was, it was, uh, I'm trying to think of some symbology that reminds me of fires, like campfires. All I had to do was stoke the fire just a little bit. You know, whenever, when you build a fire and it starts to go down and it's just those, those gorgeous red golden coals that are, that are burning and smoldering, but there's no fire really. 
but there's still a burning of the coal. So the potential of fire is there to light up. So what do we do? We, we either fan it with a device like a, 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 be, a bellows, right? A bellows device that compresses and blows air, and that'll stoke the fire. Or we take a, an, what we call a, a hot coal poker, <laughs> which is really true. And you stir the fire up and poke it a little bit. And then all of a sudden, boom, the flames shoot up, right? And it gets really hot. And kind of that's what we have to do in our life. We have to understand that our potential, our metaphysical light, our spiritualistic light is already there. All we've got to do is kind of nudge it a little bit and just get it to, to, to come forward. So if we fan or poke with a little bit of our attention onto our potentials, on who we are, what we can become, how we can serve, uh, how, how we can be more of a leader in our communities, the potential will very naturally come forward. It's already there, just like in that Phoenix. So we metaphysicians, we know we're, what do we know? What, what are we first? Are we human beings or are we spiritual beings? Well, you know, the people who are not initiated, who, are, who don't understand these metaphysical and spiritualistic teachings, they would say that they're human beings that have a soul. And I would say, and Spirit agrees, and many of you agree with me, we are a soul first. We're a spiritual being who has a human body, second, right? So we've always been eternal souls. Every religion understands that there is eternality. Is that the word? I don't know where that just came from. <laughs> uh, but we are eternal souls on an on a infinite journey, right? And we're actually returning back to the source from which we came, that God spark, right? Like the, the, the central origin of love and, and light, which is God. And so we as souls having a human experience, how crazy is it that we as souls chose, or maybe we were awarded, or maybe we were being punished and we were sent here. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like we're punished. But actually Spirit has said that only the wisest and most willing of souls who are willing to put themselves through hell, literally, choose to incarnate and take on a body on earth. Isn't that crazy? So our souls are willing to step into the mud and the muck and the quicksand of life in the third dimension to deal with the emotional roller coasters and the intellectual uh, uh, difficulties and challenges and the, and the people challenges and the work challenges and the COVID challenges. And we're here to learn from those. Those challenges are the dark cloud moments. But what does spirit always say? What do I often say in church or in my sermons, in my messages? I often will remind you that behind the dark clouds of life, the light of God is always shining. Isn't that true? And so if the light of God is always shining behind every dark cloud moment, challenge in our life, good or bad, blessing or difficulty, blessing or burden, the light of God still shines, but that light infuses the cloud. And at some point there's a silver lining and that silver lining is when we, that's what we've got to look for, that there is a lesson of learning in the silver lining of that dark cloud moment. Have you looked within the cloud that challenge to find it? And that's the light inside the darkness. When we find the light, we dispel the darkness because by its very definition, we understand, we understand that there can be no darkness when any amount of light is introduced. It's dispelled back. So we have to think about this in a, in a, in a higher way. And I want you to also understand this. Many people think that we as souls on earth, that we're predestined, maybe we're predetermined on a, in life. And, and they think that there's there is some spiritual course in life uh, that we cannot change. And the truth is, we are really predisposed, that's a better word, to a karmic path. And some people call that a divine blueprint, which I love. Cosmic contract, soul contract. There's all these cutesy little names. It's all the same. There's a divine plan for us. It hasn't mapped out all the details, but it gives us a theme to work with in one life, one human life. Then we return back to spirit through that exit point opportunity. And we take those that, the, that life, 80 years of life lessons or maybe less, 
And we take that back into spirit and we share that, almost like Akashic Records knowledge. Almost like it is. It's, it's wisdom, it's knowledge, experiences. And souls even speak about, they enter into these grand arenas and coliseums that we can't even fathom. And they, and they gather in, the, in, in, in countless numbers to watch and experience and immerse themselves into the lives of each soul that has returned from each dimension or each planet or each uh, Earth-like Earth -like existence. And they say, the souls say they, they're able to connect with these lives and experience what those who have chosen to go to the denser, darker levels in the spirit world, which happens to be the third dimension and others. And they get to experience lives that others have lived. And that's how they learn. How beautiful is that? So the light is shared from dimension to dimension, soul to soul. It's so immersive and, 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 and mer there's, an, there's a emergence, a blending of lessons and learning. So what's really interesting is that the karmic path that we are on gives us rich ups and downs in, as soul experiences. And so the, really the key, uh, the, key is, uh, the key is in our choices because we have free will, right? Every soul has free will. And the key is the choice. How do we deal with the dark cloud moments? How do we deal with the, the discovering the silver lining? How do we act? How do we not act? Are we choosing to avoid a situation we could have uh, 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 uplifted or made better? Or do we choose to uh, embrace it and, and to support the life experience and the blessing of the person and the opportunity? And so if the, the moments when we choose karmically to act or not act, those are uh, in that life experience, those determine the karmic weight in our life. Karmic weight. Did you hear that? Wait, W-E-I-G-H-T. What I'm talking about is how much light versus darkness, or really how much light, there's an abundance of light or there's a lack of light. So when I do bad deeds, low vibrational deeds, I am reducing the amount of light karmically in my life. And I have to work that off either in this life or a future life, in either in human form or uh, non-human form or meaning uh, another type of a of a humanoid soul form right or in, as a soul in another dimension I have to decide how I'm going to work that off at some point and so that determines your choices determine the karmic weight of light versus darkness now what I want to what, what I want to talk to you about real quick is this concept of, of light within the human condition. Some of us will say, and I, I've been to conferences or radio shows where I've, I've listened or participated in, I hear people say, they teach this principle, I am, say this, I am God. I am God. And I know what they're saying. It's not actually accurate 100% because it really doesn't express totally the experience, the understanding of that concept of the God force. So when we, when, we, when we say, I am God, what we need to be saying is, I am God in expression as me. So I am God, and I say up, God's not up, God is a higher vibrational expression that I am a part of, and I am because of, and, I ex and God exists through me. So I am, God is literally my hands, my feet, my words, my kindness, my light. So we literally bring God into physical manifestation through our thoughts, our words, and our actions. That's how powerful we are. That's how we affect karmic weight in our soul's journey and evolution. And it, it really is just amazing to me that you know these principles are life-changing when you just understand the basics of the last 15 minutes or 20 minutes that I've just shared with you if you can take this little bit plant this little seed into the garden of your mind water it once a day just give me once a day guys <laughs> and gals just water it with a little bit of your light and your love and your attention and just remind yourself I get to make choices every day do I choose to help somebody out that I can help? Or do I choose to be selfish and turn my light away and leave them in the darkness of ignorance, right? 
And when I do that, I'm actually dowsing myself in darkness of ignorance by walking away. You see, we heal ourselves, we bless ourselves, we build up our light through helping others. There's a principle with healers and with other intuitives, but really with the healers, as healers begin to allow this healing energy, energy to flow through them to serve others and to heal others, they actually heal themselves in the process. It is in giving that we receive. What a beautiful principle. We are personally responsible for, uh, for allowing that light into this dimension. Personally responsible. Each soul is personally responsible for, for making a difference in the world, for being the change they wish to see in the world. Love you, Gandhi, right? Just a, just a beautiful concept that I wanted you to understand today. And I want to leave you with just a, a little thought. There's this saying that we often say, and actually they say it in different places in the world. It's absolutely beautiful. It's so apropos for what I'm talking about. The concept of namaste. And when that is said in many cultures, it means the divine light within me recognizes, honors, and bows to the divine light in you. In other words, the God that expresses through me recognizes the God within you. Itself is mirrored. How beautiful. So the next time you say namaste, send a pulse of gratitude and beautiful white light blessing to the other person, to the, to the business, to the audience that you serve, to your clients, to your family members, to your pets, to your gardens, to your homes. Bless your homes. They take care of you. Infuse the space that you live and, you, and wherever you serve with that beautiful light of gratitude. And let me tell you, friends, you will push back the darkness of ignorance all around you, leaving you with a life of blessing and abundance and absolute prosperity. Remember, go out there and find your silver lining and just celebrate the light that you are. Now, let's just take a moment if you would like to, uh, to continue into a beautiful healing prayer meditation. We're going to take just a few minutes to do that, a short and sweet one. So if you would, just find a beautiful position now in your chair, in your bed, on your sofa, in your Snuggies, whatever you're wearing. And I want you to just close your eyes. Let's turn on some beautiful music here. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, just close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Pull in the light of God into your lungs. Hold that light and breathe out any difficulty or disease into the atmosphere and Mother Earth receives and neutralizes. Again, deep breath in. Pull in that light. Hold the light while we breathe out, breathe out disharmony and dis-ease to Mother Earth who receives. Beautiful. And in this moment, as we breathe in, we... We enliven and we enrich and we quicken the chakras from the root chakra, the first chakra, that red color moving up. Let's breathe in and, 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 and build up that color of red. Breathe out, holding that red. Moving your attention to your second chakra, breathing in and seeing that beautiful orange color, breathing out, maintaining that beautiful orange color. Let's take a deep breath in to the third chakra and making it yellow, bold and yellow. Breathing out, holding that yellow color in. Deep breath in to our fourth heart chakra, the beautiful green color. Make it bright and green. Add some pink. We love pink. Hold that color in. Breathe out, maintaining this strong color. Again, deep breath in as we raise the energy to our throat chakra. Blue, imagine bright blue, hold that light, breathe out, maintaining that light of blue. Again, deep breath into the third eye chakra, maintaining the color of purple, make it brilliant purple, holding the light, breathing out. And lastly, we breathe all the way up to the crown chakra, that beautiful white light, maintaining that white light within, breathing out, maintaining all the colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet and white 
And let's take another breath in. Imagine all of your chakras shifting to beautiful, pure white, divine light. All of that energy going into the auric field, blessing you, blessing the universe. Send a pulse of gratitude out to the universe, a pulse of white light gratitude into all dimensions, touching upon all beings, all souls. Beautiful job. Pulling our awareness back to this gorgeous body temple. Deep breath in. Full of white light. Deep breath out. Present in your body. Present in this moment. Move your fingers, move your toes. Open those gorgeous eyes. And welcome back. Welcome back, friends. Ladies and gentlemen, I celebrate the light that you are, the love that you are. Whatever makes you happy, whatever brings you joy, could you find a way to use that in service to another, to a community, to a church, to a center, to, a, to an organization? Find a way to share your light. Make a difference in the world. You're that powerful and you're that important. Ladies and gentlemen, until next Sunday, or until I see you on another channel, much love and namaste.